Hello, this is Chef John from FoodWishes.com with apple and cheddar cheese souffles. That's right, people have been adding sharp cheddar to apple recipes for centuries. So I thought this time we'd flip the script and add apple to a cheese recipe instead. And despite one major mishap, which I'll explain later, this came out incredibly delicious. So here we go, step one, we gotta prep some apples. So I have one Granny Smith apple that I peeled and quartered. And once that apple's quartered, we're gonna cut that in like three pieces. And then we'll just turn it and slice it across like this. The exact size is not that big of a deal. You can go a little smaller if you want. But I wouldn't make them any bigger. If those are too, too big, they might disrupt the souffle's inflation later. But anyway, we're going to dice up one apple like that. And at that point, we're going to go over to the stove where I have a skillet on medium-high heat. We're going to put some butter in there. And as soon as we see the edges start to want to brown, we're going to go ahead and toss in our apples. And we're going to cook those on medium-high for about two minutes until they just start to soften. All right, so give them a stir, keep them moving. And after about two minutes, we're gonna go ahead and sprinkle in a tablespoon of sugar and we'll stir that in. And then all we're gonna do is continue to cook this until the apples are soft and the outside gets a little caramelized. I can't really give you an exact time, which is the bad news. The good news is you're simply gonna cook them till they look like this, at which point you're gonna transfer those to a plate to cool and it's on to the souffle batter. But before we start that, do yourself a favor and prep your ramekins. And all that means is put them on a sheet pan and grease them lightly with butter. And yes, that fingering was totally fake. Those were already buttered. And then we're heading back over to the stove where we're gonna make a roux. So in a small pan over medium heat, I'm gonna melt a couple tablespoons of butter. And as soon as it melts, we're gonna add an equal amount of flour. And we're gonna stir that in. And we're gonna cook that for about three minutes. All right, we're just trying to cook out that raw starchy taste from the flour. And by the way, you people emailing me that you can't make a decent roux, I don't understand. It's simply equal parts butter and flour. There's no way for it not to work. I mean, if yours is all dry and hard to work with, you have too much flour in it. Add a little more butter. It should look like this. And then once our roux has cooked for a few minutes, we're going to go ahead and turn off the heat. And then we're supposed to slowly whisk in the cold milk into the hot roux, except we're not going to. I want to prove something to you people that are afraid to make a lumpy white sauce. I'm going to dump in the milk, and not only am I not going to whisk, I'm not even going to add a little bit at a time. I'm going to dump the whole cup in. And despite this huge breach in roux-based sauce-making technique, it's still totally going to work. I'm going to start whisking, and as soon as I think it's mixed in fairly well, and it kind of looks like that, I'm going to turn the heat back on to medium, and I'm going to continue whisking while that comes up to temperature. And you're going to see it's going to thicken up perfectly with absolutely no lumps. So if you want to whisk it in gradually, like the textbooks say, and like I've said in many other videos, go ahead. But I just wanted to show you it really is not that temperamental, okay? So once our milk is whisked in and it starts to simmer like that, I'm going to let that cook for like one more minute. And then we're going to turn off the heat because we don't want to use this hot. We want to let this cool down to just warm. And as it cools, it's going to thicken up. And once it's cooled down, let's go ahead and transfer that into a mixing bowl so we can continue the souffle batter. So to this white sauce, we're going to add some salt, a little black pepper, some cayenne, and just a little pinch of freshly grated nutmeg. Oh, you know we grate it fresh here. And then once we've seasoned that up, we're going to add a couple eggs, but we're going to separate them. We're going to put the whites in one bowl, and we're going to add the yolks to our white sauce. All right, so to recap, two yolks go in there, and we got the two whites in a separate bowl ready to whisk. So we'll just set those whites aside. And then the last major ingredient is the cheese. I'm using a sharp white Cabot cheddar from Vermont, which is amazing, and I should know. I check cheddar like a food inspector. And then once our grated cheese has been added, just go ahead and stir that together thoroughly. And that base is now ready for the whites. So let's go ahead and take our reserved whites and a balloon whisk and just start whisking. And since whipping egg whites is all about introducing air into there, you want to use long, deep strokes. And what we're trying to get to is nice, soft peaks. It should look like shaving cream. You know when you go to the old-time barber and they put the towel on your face and then they slather on that thick shaving cream? Well, that's basically the texture we're looking for. Ooh, that reminds me. i got to call my blacksmith later. But anyway, we're going to whip those egg whites into soft peaks like that. And then we'll take half of those and add it to the other bowl. This is standard souffle procedure. You add half. You fold that in just to lighten the mixture. You don't have to be that gentle. Just kind of fold it in. And as soon as that first addition of whites kind of just barely disappears, go ahead and add in the rest. And then this half you want to fold in and be a little more careful. And you know folding, right? You slide the spatula underneath and you fold everything over the top. And then you turn the bowl and then you do it again and you keep doing that until those egg whites are just barely incorporated. And then last but not least, we're gonna gently fold in our now cooled apple pieces. 
And as I do that, some of you keen observers are noticing, hey, that mixture doesn't look as light and airy as that last shot we saw. Well, that's because of the major mishap I mentioned earlier. I dropped a measuring cup in the bowl, and by the time I cleaned it up and scraped the sides down, I'd lost a lot of air. And by the way, these came out so good, I almost didn't say anything, but I did want to mention something because yours are probably going to come out even better because you're not going to drop a measuring cup into your batter, all right? And then we're going to fill up our four ramekins evenly, of course. Why you'd want to fill them unevenly, I don't know, but I always feel like I should mention that. And then those are going to go in the center of a preheated 400 degree oven for 22 minutes, approximately. It'll depend on the exact size and shape of your ramekin, but you're going to cook those until they're browned and puffed. And they're going to look like this. And I'm sorry, this front lighting is not working for me. Let's switch to light coming from the side. Ooh, that's much better. And of course, like all souffles, those are going to fall pretty much immediately. So if you want the oohs and ahs, make sure your guests are like right there when you take them out. But like I said, they are going to deflate almost instantaneously, which is fine. These simply do not taste as good piping hot. So suit yourself, but I'm going to suggest you eat these warm. And when you do, I think you're going to be quite impressed. I mean, even a regular sharp cheddar souffle is a fairly amazing thing. But when you add in those little pieces of caramelized apple, you're talking about taking it up to a whole nother level of awesomeness. And by the way, I like to use much less egg whites in my souffles than a lot of recipes. Okay, I'll take flavor over extra foam any day of the week. So for something like this, I really do prefer the texture with a little less egg white. So anyway, there you go. Apple cheddar cheese souffles. Hopefully we've shown that this is not a very difficult technique. It is really not as temperamental as people think. And the amazing looking and tasting results totally make it worth trying, which I really hope you do. So head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy. Enjoy.